Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you watch me, like if you joined me live, thank you so much for your support and your participation. If you joined me on YouTube later, thank you so, so much as well. So this is a very simple class. I just want to take a moment to wish everyone a happy holidays. If you're watching it before holiday at the end of 2023, or, or we can do any day it can be a holiday. It doesn't have to be specifically Christmas or New Year. Any day if we apply ourselves, if you think it can be a holiday for us. But today is a specific as we're approaching one of the darkest night of the year or probably the longest night. If you do not know me, I'm Alina Smolyansky and I'm certified instructor of Neurographica. And I offer it on my YouTube channel. You can find many free videos where I can try to introduce the idea of Neurographica and Neurographic art, which is more relaxed form of Neurographica. So with this, let's... Uh, delve into our celebration, our graphic celebration, neurographic celebration of this wonderful event. There are so many holidays around this time of the year when we approach this dark night and then more sun with, uh, will, and more days will be coming, longer days are approaching. And essentially the sun, or rather I would say the position of the earth divide our create a cycle of night and day by its rotation, but also, especially in the northern or you know, southern hemisphere, like far enough from the equator, we experience this longer nights and longer days. Uh, other tradition where I associate also the condition and state of yin with darkness, introspection, and thinking. And then yang is more like active, light, the sun. So, and today I would like to to introduce another shape of labyrinth. We will do labyrinths. So, one idea it has two entrances, and or two exits. So, one entrance, one exit. It's called also processional labyrinths, and it's known in Nordic country. So, condition. Why would the labyrinths? I wanted to choose for this specific specific time of the year. It's because we whether you're celebrating New Year or not, but there's something, 2023 is almost at the end, a new year has passed, and we subconsciously or consciously start asking ourselves, what have I done? What have I, have I achieved? And what can I take, considering all that my experiences, what can I take with me in the new year? So that's what I uh, would like to dedicate this session about. It's more like, introspection so what are we going to to do and the labyrinth is a wonderful meditative tool that we are going to draw it uh, using the idea of known as a, the goddess labyrinth and it uh, used in northern countries uh, it, it was made of stone cut into uh, like petroglyphs on the stone and some of them exist you can find it some of them were restored but that was a, a specific labyrinth. And that's probably one of the oldest known as a, was found over 3,000 years ago. Uh, that was something that we considered as an oldest labyrinth. The other one classical is the uh, Cretan Cret, uh, labyrinth, which is a little bit maybe younger, but more known. Talking about Neurographica, if you know Neurographica, that's great. You do incorporate the idea of the Neurographic line and rounding. But we mostly concentrate on... Uh, on drawing the labyrinth itself. And when we draw this composition of the labyrinth, we'll add neurographic lines. Also, uh, this labyrinth has a, a seed pattern. The seed pattern is a shape of Y. And Y, 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 like letter Y, you're welcome to use it. If you have something like ask yourself a question, if your decision, if you are considering taking step one direction or another, as an ancient letter from the Greek alphabet, Opsilon, which has like a fork in the road, represents the fork. And uh, originally was one side is um, virtue or vice, like plus or minus, good or bad. But 
in the broader sense, we can consider it as when we want to make a decision. They're equally strong, and that's why it's so difficult to make a choice. So if you have something like you consider, yes, you're welcome to use it for your intention for drawing this libraries. So then you, you can continue with have this intention. If you have a question to ask yourself and life, that's a good time. And also this time, so many people attribute divine quality for this period of the darkest night. And we're like two days away, three days away. That's when they consider the, the sun stays still, the axis is tilted, and it remains in this position for before the main day, like on 22nd of December, plus minus three days. It stays with this, this position, and it slowly starts moving, giving more light in the northern hemisphere and probably less light in the southern hemisphere, whatever your position. And as well, at the same time, if you're celebrating well, the Christian celebration of Nativity, the Feast of Nativity is celebrated around this time by coincidence or by design. But the idea is, again, it's bring more light, life, and initiate a new cycle. Let's start drawing. So, by the way, if you have a dark paper, I will use a dark paper. So some, the idea of darkness and bringing more light. You really can't see that the candle. It, it works on the contrast. If, I, if it, uh, this surface white, we will show a, a candle. So, so green and the red, traditional Christmas colors. So and that's idea of the, so right now it's dark. I have this black paper. And so I positioned my uh, page uh, vertical format. Uh, I, it's letter, letter size A4. And I position in vertically to indicate that movement upwards, uplifting. And the labyrinth itself will be more like stretched, more, more vertical uh, than horizontal. But you can create it any shape uh, depending how you draw lines. So then I have a, a why specifically this, uh, when I was considering this labyrinth with the uh, points, I have a couple of decisions that I'm contemplating and it's not a black, a black and white. It's more like a, a fork in the road where, and I don't know which one it will uh, bring. They have advantages and disadvantages, but mostly it's related that I do not know and ex experience them because I do not know the, what's in the turn. And uh, if I had known, they wouldn't be such a big deal. So how we start drawing these labyrinths? So with the idea, I want to find these labyrinths to help me find an answer in both they're related and unrelated. Combined within me, obviously they are related. So, uh, I position about about in the middle. Uh, I draw the letter Y. It's like a, like as I said, representing so uh, this is how we draw the seed pattern for this labyrinth. And then uh, approximately, I give it enough space as will be path. This empty space will be between. So, uh, and I divide it well, probably maybe a centimeter, less than half an inch for three, four more. So this is one, two, three, four, five. And now we'll draw this uh, V shapes like wide V above. And if uh, you can think it could resemble even Christmas tree. So when you have this here, here they are. And I, I put two dots, one about in the middle. And one a little bit on the side. Okay. So that will be the end of the lines. Now, additional lines will be drawn at the bottom. So, also, so this, this, uh, leave enough room for the path. So these are the walls of the labyrinth. Maybe. So I have one. 
and a dot. And on this side, uh, two V shapes, two brackets like this. Two and a dot. Now we can continue uh, drawing the walls. I can repeat it again, but please be careful as the uh, lines will um, it's important to position the line. So the first one is like this. Top to the first dot. Okay. The second one on this, so we're working on the right side. To the the central dot. Now we condition is more like a spiral to the connect the line. Here's another line. So from right to left in order. So you see the next the next line. Continue. Then we get here we start with the next one. Now, now I have this dot. This is the end. Uh, this will be the turn, the wall. So, and uh, now around, make a circle. You can make it uh, not uh, such a straight. Angle this round and it connects to the dot, and the last one this is like a, will connect the two lines. So that's what the entire that's what the labyrinth is done. So the I mean the lines. So this is the entrance. The, it has two entrances. One path is longer than the other. It depends one which one I'm not sure, but it depends one you choose. So you can enter on any one, any entrance. So the idea with the working with uh, labyrinth is when we concentrate on our request or you can focus on your prayer like uh, have a prayer but typically it's done for focusing and we start moving you can use like any color uh, marker just to check whether this labyrinth works so you didn't lose any line and of course for meditation and and finding an answer. So I want I ask myself that I want to find this concentrate on finding the answer to my question, which is any clear indication which path I should follow. And I can choose any entrance. Okay, okay I'll start from the right and I will move. So this is a dark. I use a dark, uh, oh, yes. lighter marker, so I can, and I can draw the neurographic line now, See, you know, like a path where,
Open the center. Hmm. So I checked the uh, uh, walk through the labyrinth so with my pencil. So the difference is uh, between the traditional like Cretan labyrinth, there are two separate paths, one to, leading to the center and one out of the center. But, uh, so that's why it, it will be known as processional labyrinth, as it allows uh, people without meeting like a each other on the way so they all can move at the same time without meeting uh, uh, the other one the group that's coming towards them from the center it's very convenient so what would the uh, librarians can answer this tool you can keep it for yourself and ask any questions. So if, when when it comes to neurographic, of course, like any drawing, this is just a composition. By the way, if you answer, no, I haven't received the answer yet, but I felt like a sense of relief when I exited from here. Just relaxation. No. And that's very good relaxation too as well, because as we move, in, and change direction, observing with following our eyes, the tip of the marker or tip of the pencil, our eyes move in those path, and that allows us to switch from one hemisphere to another. So that's why it creates a there is a sense of relaxation. So because we force the the two brain hemispheres to work at the same time. And as I'm talking like this, I feel like it's very specific. If you know, if you practice any meditation or yoga, relaxation, I feel a, a movement on the top of your crown of your head, coolness, yes, very nice, yeah. pleasant feeling. So this is my library, it's like, it could be my, my home oracle, that can answer, help me answer questions. And of course, if you know the questions, are, they come from our subconscious mind. If we have a question, it means that we need an answer. We just need a good tool to help us access it. And I could, using the walls, like the white marker, I can outline again to make it stronger and even to, to strengthen it, to give it more energy with the neurographic lines. So I'm outlining uh, the existing lines.
I can also bring more energy from outside using neural lines. Another point can make it nice turn. It's like walking uh, labyrinths on the path, but on the walls using the lines. Right here. No. no, I'm not sure about uh, like uh, drawing the lines inside the labyrinth. If this is uh, the exist uh, the path that I would like to walk occasionally with my marker, I'm not sure whether I would like to draw the lines, the neurographic lines inside, creating visual abstraction. Like on the way, like it will be like a hurdle that I have to jump. I don't feel like doing that right now. I want to have to keep this path clear and use it only for drawing the lines when I decide to walk the labyrinth. But I can strengthen it and adding with more energy by using the neurographic lines from outside. By bringing this energy from outside. I mean, we can have a nice circle. If I see a sharp line, I can soften it by adding additional rounding. So right now, I'm just sending uh, positive vibes through the lines from outside to support my labyrinth. So the labyrinth represents me. Maybe I need to myself to be by on my own and to make this decision, decisions or ideas. Uh, Wanted to put the candle, but it and see it in this light. Specifically, because uh, this labyrinth is known as uh, the goddess labyrinth, I use my not a marker but a pencil. To create this soft transition. So what I, I think in my life I've been pushing myself enough. So we'll be bringing more yin energy, like a more feminine, accepting, relaxing, enjoying. It's all this in energy will be probably beneficial. And a soft pencil will probably work uh, better than the marker.
Some light colors work I found is very nice on the paper. Bring it more live energy. So overall, I think it will be more like in work with this soft color, with more like introspection thinking. Oh, I love this uh, blue and black. It's very, very nice. like this, the blue. And now I see the, it's not a problem, but something concern, these pencils that I'm using has a lot of uh, pigment, it's a pr prisma color. There, so that's why the color is so intense. Yeah, but they create this film because of their pigment, because of the uh, facts that they can contain. So the regular pencil will not work on them. Yeah, so the, another idea I have is white gel pen. So if you want to strengthen, uh, the make to make uh, the labyrinth wall to stand out more, I can even I can use like a marker. But again, there's difficulty with this uh, colored pencil. It doesn't allow uh, drawing. No. So I have to walk around where I don't have this pencil. There were the other neurographic elements that we may ask about Like the field lines, and then I'm not sure, but that could be. If not through, I don't want to. As I mentioned before, I don't want to put any lines through labyrinths and make these abstractions on my path. And then I'm going. To, so if I use a field line, I can probably use this. As I started, I am very attracted by this one. You create a field line that supports the labyrinth and goes out. Like, uh, hugging it, holding it. Outside, supporting it. Protecting it like a, a two hands. will be my supporting line.
And definitely, if you see somewhere the corners that you want to soften, that you can do it during the, uh, your drawing. Trying different pencils and see the effect of them on that on the black paper. In colors, I probably will make this uh, more warmer on this side and colder on this side. Uh, in the rest, it's your, your your work, your imagination. If you want some addition, if you want to add some figures on the background, that's also it's possible. I will not do. I think I will leave it. Nice and simple as this. I could do a drop, teardrop shape. Now, of course, you can position whatever you, you like. It may be even from the opposite. It could be uh, the entrance could be from the other, not necessarily. So whatever. That that creates a very different picture. So I wonder what would happen if I decide to walk when I turn it upside down. So called upside down. There is no rule that the entrance has to be necessary in the bottom, and south, or uh, north, not north. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. That's a simple drawing of the labyrinth. Also, the look of the spiral here. Almost like a in in yang sign in the middle. So that's what I wanted to share with you. Well, there's a class, so the the rest is your your work with the labyrinths, you with your imagination. Well, I'm glad that you like labyrinths are so labyrinths and spirals. They're similar, but they create a similar impression.
also wanted to mention are those who didn't take my basic user course or those who took it in the past. I am going to offer the basic user live at the beginning of January, starting on January 9th. So that will be uh, January 9th, 2024. So if you welcome, there's a offer a discount. If anyone is interested, please, and you didn't take it before, uh, please join. I do not offer it live or, or often. Please enjoy this opportunity. So if you have any questions regarding this course, please let me know. And then we'll, that will be January and February. It will be in the next, probably next free class will be in February when the year of the dragon will begin. So Chinese year, please prepare to draw the dragon. So that's my announcement so far. But with this, I wish everyone happy holidays. I really enjoyed being online. So if you can like my video when it's posted on YouTube, please like it, comment, subscribe if you are not subscribed, and share it. I will appreciate it very much. So thank you so much. And until, until next time.